Hello my friends, my name is Ashkan and in today's tutorial I'm going to talk about one challenging issue in piping engineering which is impact testing. But before everything please subscribe my channel because it is valuable for me to see you guys are following my engineering tutorial videos. Two major aspects of impact testing are supported in ASMA B31.3. The first one is when impact testing shall be done and the second one is what is the acceptance criteria for impact testing? Today, we are going to answer the first question based on ASME B31.3 paragraphs and explanations. I will provide another video for answering the second question in following tutorials. As I explained in my other videos on table A1 of ASME B31.3, here we can find many useful data for our selected material. These data include tensile and yield strength, basic allowable stress in different temperatures and the minimum temperature. The minimum temperature is the lowest temperature that we can use a material without impact testing and as you can see in the red box it may be presented in an exact number or an alphabetic character. Let's brighten up the issue with an example. Assume that you have a material let's say a 53 grade A. This A53 grade A material shall not be used in services with minimum design temperature lower than 20 degrees Fahrenheit unless some special conditions in the code are followed. In the second option, I'm using a material such as A106 grade A which the minimum temperature is outlined with a letter that is B here. When I see a letter, what I have to do is go into this figure and draw the lines based on my design data. Let's consider that my pipe thickness is 20 mm and my minimum design temperature is minus 20 degrees centigrade. By drawing the lines, we can see that the intersection point is below the B curve and in this case, an impact testing is mandatory. Don't forget that each diagram in SMB 31.3 has a tabular value table for giving you the exact numbers and to prevent mistakes. Here in our case, as an example, when the material thickness is around 20 mm, the minimum design temperature that AST and A106 grade A can be used without impact testing is 6.7 degrees centigrade or 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Below that, the material requires an impact testing based on the details mentioned in table 323.2.2. It seems to be such simple issue up to here, but the decision making gets more complicated when the minimum design temperature goes cooler than minus 29 degrees centigrade. Please like the video and subscribe my channel and let's explore more details on impact testing necessity assessment based on ASME B31.3. Before continuing the tutorial, don't forget to read the notes of each figure and table since these data are so important and might change the final decision. As an example, notes under figure 323.2.2a are giving us many important explanations. Note 2, for example, says when your fluid service is inside the category D limitations, all the carbon steel materials may be used up to minus 29 degrees centigrade. Here you can see the specifications of category D fluid. In Appendix M, you can find more details. Or in Note 3, as an example, the code is telling us that if your API Fireball X grade materials are normalized, you can use curve B for impact testing determination. While these materials are all marked with letter A in table A1. Note 5, for example, says that all the materials with minimum design temperature below minus 29 degrees centigrade requires impact testing of the weld and heat affected zone by the manufacturer, except as mentioned in table 323.2.2. So, don't forget to read all the notes exactly. The other important subject in impact testing necessity determination is reduction in exemption. This means that if the designer is assured that the stresses in the system are not going to reach the higher limits of the allowable stress of the material, he or she can have some relaxations and the minimum temperature for impact testing for the project. Let's see the diagram for better understanding of the issue. As you can see, we have a stress ratio on the vertical axis and temperature reduction in horizontal axis. Whatever the stress ratio is reduced, the temperature reduction is increased. In another word, 
when the safe margin between the applied stresses to the system and its final capacity of stress bearing is increased, we can ignore the impact testing requirements for our material. Assume that we are using a A53 grit A material that has minimum temperature of 20 degrees Fahrenheit in table A1 and also assume that the stress ratio is 0.6. In this case, we can use our material up to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit without any impact testing since it is mentioned in this table. By the way, pay attention to the notes. Some guys also look at this table in another perspective. They say when doing a stress analysis in Caesar 2 and when one of the temperature cases are colder than the limited temperature in table A1 for each material, the Caesar 2 itself multiply the material's allowable stress by the stress ratio and the amount of the stress ratio is obtained reversely from this figure. To be more clear, assume that the stress man is modeling a 53 grade A material with 16 KSI allowable stress in ambient temperature and let's assume that one of the temperature cases is 2 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that the guy is using the material 18 degrees Fahrenheit below the minimum temperature specified in table A1. So his material doesn't have that 16 KSI allowable stress anymore. But what is the final quantity? Draw a line upward based on the temperature difference on horizontal line and find the stress ratio. Multiply this number by allowable stress from table A1 and you now have the real allowable stress that the SAFA considers for the material and that temperature. Don't forget to consider the reduction in exemption is only applicable when all the requirements of section C of paragraph 323.2.2 are prevailing. First, the material shall not be used in elevated temperatures. Local stresses should be below 10% of the allowable stress, and piping must not be under maintenance loads. If all the cases are true, the exemption diagram can be used. Now, you may wonder how the stress ratio must be obtained. To answer this question, let's go to the section 323.2.2 part B, but before that, don't forget to like the video and subscribe my channel. Thank you, my friends. Okay, as you can see from this section of the code, the stress ratio is defined as the highest value of these three cases. The first one is dividing the circumferential pressure stress of the system based on the minimum thickness by the basic allowable stress. The second option is defined for the components that have pressure ratings such as valves and flanges. In this case, process pressure of that component must be divided by the maximum allowable pressure on that rating at the same temperature. And the third one is defined as the combined stress divided by the basic allowable stress. The combined stress includes the stresses due to the internal pressure and weight, the stresses due to occasional loads, and all the stresses due to secondary loads in the system. This item can be found in Scissor 2, known as the stress ratio, in all the load cases that we examine for stress checking. One important note. Don't tell yourself that since the internal pressure of my system is low, the stress ratio is also a small quantity. This factor can be raised due to many factors including the weight of the system, expansion and contraction stresses, or even occasional load cases. So by going to this section of your scissor 2, check the exact amount of the stress ratio in your system in all load cases. As you remember from my other tutorials, except OPE load cases, the rest must be checked for a stress quantity. In another board, by defining the correct load cases on your scissor 2 software, the highest stress ratio in your load cases can be used here for finding the reduction in exemption temperature. Now imagine that by having all the challenges, you have selected your material considering all the notes about corrosion, temperature range, cost, availability, and etc. Now we need to see first, does our material requires an impact test, and second, which parts of our material must be impact tested. Table 323.2.2 helps us in this matter. As you can see on the top of the table, these impact tests are in addition to the impact tests needed by the material specification. This table is divided in two columns and two rows. 
pause the video for some seconds and take a look at the mentioned columns and rows. As you can see, column A refers to materials that are going to be used where the minimum design temperature is at or warmer than the minimum temperature in table A1. Column B, on the other hand, is for the materials in which the process minimum design temperature is colder than the minimum temperature in table A1. The first row belongs to all the listed materials in ASMEB 31.3 code, while the second row refers to the materials beyond what is listed here. Okay, let's get deeper into detailed rows of the listed materials. The first row belongs to all the gray irons, and it says under any condition, impact testing is not required. The second row belongs to malleable and ductile irons, and all the carbon steel materials which are in accordance with note number 1, for example A134, A36, A283, A1011, or other materials mentioned in this note. Under these circumstances, using these materials at warmer temperature than the mentioned in table A1 is allowed without any testing, and using them in colder design temperatures are absolutely prevented. According to the third row, using all the rest of carbon steel, no alloy steels, ferritic martensitic, and duplex stainless steel materials is allowed, but under some conditions. As is indicated in column A, if these materials are gonna be used in temperatures warmer than their minimum temperature of table A1, the base material doesn't need to be impact tested, but the weld metal shall be impact tested if the process design minimum temperature is colder than minus 29 degrees centigrade. By meeting some conditions, the impact test might be relaxed by the designer of the project. Some of the conditions are such as 1. Using qualified building consumables by impact testing at design temperature. 2. When there exists some dimensional limitation on the impact test specimen. Or when the stress ratio is below 0.3 and the design temperature is warmer than minus 104 centigrade. You can read all the notes in ASMEB 31.3 code to understand all the conditions where impact testing of the worlds can be ignored. Based on what mentioned in column B, when the specified materials on the left are used at temperatures colder than their minimum temperature of table A1, the base material shall be heat treated according to the related ASTM specification. In addition, the base material, build deposit and has shall be impact tested. Plus, those relaxed materials at the note 2 and 3 of the curved figure we talked previously shall also be impact tested on their well deposit and has sections. You may be somehow confused. Be sure that by reading all the notes and connecting the figures and tables in your mind, you will definitely understand the explanations. If you had any problem, you can ask in the comments and I will explain all I know. The rest of the table is for other materials such as stenetic stainless steels or aluminum or nickel based materials and to keep the video short, we are not covering them. These materials have direct and easy understanding explanations inside the table and you can read them to have a better overview of the whole issue. Thank you everyone for watching this video, hope to be useful. I will also prepare a video on the acceptance criteria of impact testing in following weeks. It's so valuable for me to see your comments on my channel and don't forget to tap the subscribe button. Thank you everyone and bye bye.